Welcome to St. Timothy and to this worship celebration. Uh, Whether you are a uh, first-time visitor with us or a long-time member, whether you are nearby or far away, may this worship bring God's reign of peace to us all. If you would like a bulletin that accompanies this service, you may go to stim.org and that bulletin also includes information about ways to respond to some recent disasters. Fires here in California, severe weather in Iowa and the southeast, as well as uh, the recent explosion that devastated Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, Now I would like to invite you to uh, set aside those things that are a frequent distraction to us and let us sing our first hymn, Built on a Rock. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail, remove far from us everything that is harmful, and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now it's time for the children's word. Have you ever noticed how we, that is most people, have two ears but only one mouth? Um, Well, we have two ears because... uh, we, we have, when we have two ears, we can hear in stereo and we can tell where sound is coming from. But uh, some people also say, you know, we have two ears so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. And I think that's pretty good advice, too, that we listen as twice as much, twice as carefully and twice as much time as we have something to say. Because when we listen to other people, uh, we get to understand them better. And you notice that most people also have two eyes, right? And so we can, as we're listening, we can also look twice as much. Because even with looking, we can listen more carefully. And we can understand uh, what their feelings are. And maybe most important, we can um, feel here, right in our heart, and understand what uh, those other people might be feeling too. All that before we begin to open our mouth and have something to say. Um, Because when we listen closely and we look closely at what people might be feeling and we feel with them with our heart, uh, then we can also speak those words of kindness and those words of love Those uh, words that God's very spirit gives to us to say um, so that we can uh, be a better friend to our friends or maybe uh, a more patient listener with our parents 
or um, just a good learner when we are in school. Um, all of those things that we get to do when we listen. Let us pray. And gracious God, we give you thanks for our ears and for our eyes, for our hearts and for our mouths. May we always speak your gracious words of love to our friends and our family and all that come into our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. And truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I think we usually misunderstand Jesus when we hear this passage. We think he's giving the church for all time the holy way of doing discipline. It's even in our church constitution, but should it be? Interpreting it this way seems contrary to what Jesus says both before and after. Before, he tells the parable of the shepherd who leaves the flock to go find the one sheep that was lost. And right afterwards, he tells Peter that he should forgive, not just seven times, but 77 times. Isn't the point to save the lost? Isn't the point to forgive constantly in order to try to preserve the relationship? So why would we understand this reading as the appropriate method for removing people we maybe don't like or people we don't get along with? Do you suppose we're missing Jesus' point here? Instead, 
Let's focus on that word we hear again and again in the reading. Listen. When we have been hurt, sinned against, Jesus tells us our goal should be to be heard, to be listened to. And I would suggest, of course, that that will require us to listen in return. Truly listen. Think about what's at the core of any significant relationship, no matter whether it's with your parents or children or spouse or a close friend. Are not love and trust the most important things for that good relationship? And don't they depend on good communication, good listening? It's, is it not also the case with our brothers and sisters at church? And yet in all the relationships, in all of them, there may come times when love and trust is strained to the breaking point, or even beyond it. What happens then? Well, what happens next depends largely on what you want to happen. What do you intend? Consider, how often have you heard someone explode about what someone else did to them and tell you what a horrible person that person is? Compare that to how often you have heard someone who went to that other one and shared calmly and honestly how they were hurt. I'm guessing that first option happens way more often. You know, that righteous anger, it feels good to express it, and it even feels good to share in it, to hear it, because you have a common enemy then. More importantly, you are right, and you are good, and the other is wrong and bad, right? But that second option, the second option is the hard path to go to the one who hurt you with the goal, with the intent, the truly heartfelt desire of mending the relationship. So no, I, I want to say quickly that I'm not advocating that an abused person should put themselves in danger of more abuse, but uh, neither is Jesus here. See, in the church, in sharing this community of Christ, relationships matter, and it should be our goal to not break them up, to not lose them. The church is so often fight about maybe silly things, like the colors of the carpet or the paint, and so often that there are even jokes about it. We don't really like to admit it, but so much conflict in churches and elsewhere begins with issues of personality, not, not serious doctrinal issues, not questions of mission, but no matter what the conflict, whether it stems from a significant disagreement or not. And frankly, if you think that all of your disagreements stem from significant differences, I want to hold up a mirror for you for a moment. But no, the real question is not who is right and who is wrong. You know, we, we tend to come into every situation trying to decide right or wrong, good and bad, attractive or ugly. It's how we have been trained to interact with the world. And that's called dualistic thinking. But where does it leave us? Angry and in conflict and breaking of relationships. No. Maybe you've heard this phrase, you can either be right or you can be in relationship. You can either be right or you can be in relationship. And so often our ego drives us to choose to be right. This is the main issue we all have to face in relationships, in our families, with our spouses, with our friends, and in our church. We want to be called right 
and our opponent wrong. We want to be good and the other bad. We want to be righteous and the other condemned. Being in relationship is choosing a third way. It is the hard way and it is the truly good way. Here is Jesus. Here he is calling us to follow and to let go of our dualistic thinking. We need to move beyond it. Then we will begin to mend the world one relationship at a time. This is how we follow. By healing relationships. By striving to be truly at peace with each other. And this is how we embody the Spirit. The Spirit itself is empowering us to, to choose that third way. And Jesus leads the way for us. He is both our example and the one through whom we have the power to take the third way, the way of the Spirit. That is what the cross is all about. God came to us in Jesus, not for the sake of right and wrong, but for the sake of of relationship. God chose relationship with you and me rather than choosing to be right. Yes, God was right, is righteous, forever will be right and just, but God wants relationship more. And this is precisely how the Christ lives through us. How Christ is present in our daily lives, in all our daily acts, where we put love first. We see so much division in our time. I'm sure it is making us all depressed. And our so-called leaders rarely do more than show us how to fight they accomplish nothing and let people suffer and watch our world burn. Will there never be peace and healing? Yes. Yes, there will be. And it begins with us, little by little, one relationship at a time, where two or three gather in my name, in, in God's name, in Jesus' name, that is when we come together with the goal of saving and restoring love and trust. There is Christ. So let us trust Jesus on this. This is the way to change the world. Choose relationship. Choose love. This is what Jesus was willing to die for. This is what Jesus gave us the spirit for, to heal, to restore, to bring peace. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered 
under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your Church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community, especially through organizations like iHelp, The Gathering for Women, and our collaborative work with St. Philip and Epiphany Churches. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution, especially those in Louisiana affected by Hurricane Laura. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially Josh, Don, the family and friends of Judy Andreessen, and those that we now name silently or allowed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equipped them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set 
before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, with God's people from every time and place, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives us himself to be our food and drink. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. June, as you leave our congregation, we wish to bid you farewell. Receive this reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to that place that I have prepared. June, will you please face our, our congregation? We give thanks for June for her many years leading the Altar Guild and for her service on the Church Council, in education ministries, and so many other ways, and especially for her faithfulness and love of the Church. You will be dearly missed, and we hope you will be able to visit soon and frequently. Now you may turn back and face me. 
In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you a member of his church. In this congregation, it has been our joy to share with you the mission and celebration of the life of Christ. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. So we encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts in your new home, united with us in the body of Christ and the mission we share. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for June and for the many years we have shared with her. As she has been a blessing to us, so now send her forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.